So good morning to everyone. Uh, what I would like to do today is to share with you two things I've been experimenting in the last few years around two problems uh, that are relevant uh, and that uh, unfortunately now that I listen to uh, George's presentation, I mean, it makes me feel uh, somehow at, n n not at ease in the sense that I think that what uh, we, I'm actually doing here is basically a rework because I'm reworking and you know, what, what should have been worked in the, in the first place when, when, when people are actually in high school or even, or even earlier. But what I've been, I've been trying to do in the last few years is to run a little bit of experiments. On the one hand, as a teacher, as a teacher in, in, a, in a relatively prominent business school, uh, probably the, the most famous in Italy, one of the top 10 uh, business schools in, 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 in Europe, uh, ranked the Financial Times, uh, accredited, and so on. And acting there a little bit as a, I would say as a, as a, as, 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 as a member of the SEALS Corp, trying to dismantle what is the standard way of building managers or, or managers' capabilities in business schools, which is to provide you know, a set of, of, of very profound and deep knowledge and tools and, and then have these people go in companies and manage the traditional way by command and control, by results, and so on. So the first thing is, is, so the problem I was trying to solve or experimenting with is uh, how do we effectively expose college students uh, uh, early on to lean thinking? So the experiment here is a little bit what John was said earlier, lean learning and, and learning on lean together. How, how can we do that? And the second instead is more on the corporate learning side. And the, the, the problem I was trying to, to, to deal with there is, how, how come, I mean, uh, uh, what are the, 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 the issues and how can we try to take a step at, uh, when lean transformations are derailed or, or fail because of, you know, we fail to, to develop the capabilities? What are the typical problems there? And, and what I'm trying to do here is basically to show you uh, the two things I've been working and, and share with you my, my, my uh, little experience on this. So uh, seven years ago, when I when I uh, I was I, I came back from the U.S. and, and started teaching, the, I was assigned a third-year undergraduate course at Bocconi University. These are uh, business students. I had taught previously previously in the School of Engineers in other, in other universities, usually teaching lean as a subsection of an operations management course. That's usually what I what I did. And at that point, as part of my further com quote, conversion, and quote, to lean, I wanted, well, let's try to do this seriously. So I, I obviously read and then tried to look around, and, and I stumbled onto what Bob Eliani was doing at the University of Connecticut, and I said, that sounds somehow interesting. Well, let's try and do it. And basically what it suggests is that there's a traditional way of designing and offering courses, uh, which is abstract contact, uh, conceptual learning, uh, lectures, uh, evaluation of learning at the end of, 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 of the course, uh, and, and of course, feedback from students. And trying to move to something different, which is instead applied practical uh, content, experiential learning, a, a variety of methods apply, and weekly tests, small assignments, individual projects, work samples, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I set out and I designed uh, a course uh, this is a course that, I mean, it's similar to, to what happened to, to, to John and, and, and Mike and, and University of Michigan. It, it has become, despite the fact that it is probably the most uh, uh, unorthodox course in the business school, uh, it suddenly became uh, relatively popular. So I, I, it ramped up from 10 students in 2007 to 130 in 2013 and 14. Now I have big problems in managing. Imagine that the course I have two TAs, uh, so problems with simulations and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know the the the, the feedback from, from the student is absolutely is absolutely fantastic. So I will simply go through the syllables that you can find online. I can provide you with just to show you a little bit. So the first thing I did was to clarify what are the educational objectives here. Uh, know uh, the basics, um, learn how to a little bit of understanding how to do things, uh, eliminate waste. Uh, uh, understand what are the drivers of organizational performance uh, and uh, how to learn. So that's, that's basically what I'm trying to do. And also understand for a manager what this means, which is completely different from what you tend to typically learn in, 
especially in MBA programs. That's why I've not been allowed to teach something like this in the, in the, in the, in the MBA program. So this is basically the course info. And, and I want to underline a few things here. Uh, we, I, mean, I use several things uh, as methods. Uh, simulations, uh, company visits, uh, interaction with managers, uh, uh, personal and company projects. Uh, I try to test as quickly, as, as frequently as possible. Weekly, usually, we have a test. And uh, all students are required to run one individual personal project and one company project. And so the problem is then how to match students with companies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these are the textbooks. Uh, usually students complain that they cost a lot, but I think that uh, up to now, I mean, this is the best combination. So Jeff Likers and then two books that are fundamental, uh, that is learning to see and managing to learn. And I think that's, you know, the technical and the social part of, 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 the, of the capabilities that the manager should, should have, processes and, 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 how to, and how to have the others learn. Well, this is the class calendar. I also suggest and, and use with the, in the forum and in the, in, the, in the website, we have a learning platform, an LMS, uh, there's plenty of resources, videos, uh, there's a forum, uh, uh, but these are the additional resources I tend to, to, to um, suggest to students and work with them on. Obviously, I use a simulation. Joachim did a fantastic work, so we will not expand on that, but it's a legal game. It's you know, hands-on, it's very practical and they run through four runs of, and rounds of, of improvement and try to understand the, the, the basic and the principles. And they play different roles and, they try, and I try to have the students rotate on, on different roles. And then, and I think this is the, the most interesting part for me because I learn a lot but also for the students, there's these projects. And students have to develop an individual or a small team personal project and a company project. Uh, that satisfy some conditions, and uh, that must be you know, discussed and approved beforehand so that they actually, uh, it actually meets and satisfies these requirements. And now what I want to do is to, to show you an example of this project. So I would like to build up. This is actually what the students did. I mean, uh, the course finished in, in the spring semester in June, so I would like to go on on project description. If that, so. This is basically what the students did. This is the, the, the project wrap up. And the project was a personal project about lean morning. Uh, our project has the aim of showing how a simple process like waking up in the morning to go to school can be improved by simply by looking at it with the eyes for continuous improvement. The process we analyze involves, involves five steps. Bathroom, getting dressed, microwave, having breakfast, and packing up for school. And, and they actually did the project. So if you please sc scroll down a little bit, and then I'll show you also what, what they did. So they actually did the project and, and, and improved uh, uh, the, 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 whole, the whole process. So if you sc scroll further, they applied you know, the concepts. And if you go down further here, they also used a little bit of, you know, of the tools, of, of, of the tools uh, uh, typical, for instance, in, in, work, in, in standardized work, uh, et cetera. Uh, the interesting thing is that not only they did you know, the conceptual thing of the exercise, but they also engaged uh, actually in, in, in showing what was the initial condition and what was the target condition. So if you can go back to the slides and show us, it's, it's two uh, short clips and, and it, they show, I mean, the, the initial or, or current and target condition and, and lean versus non-lean versus lean uh, breakfast.
You can go now. How much should we really do those dishes? I will let you uh, guess what is the target condition, obviously, and the removal of waste and so on. But I think that uh, what is important here, and I think this is a very interesting uh, quote that from uh, Mihaly, I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce this last name, but it's a fantastic book, uh, an oldie but a goodie, that says uh, it is that even the most routine tasks like washing dishes, dressing, or moving the lawn become more rewarding if we approach them with the care it would take to make a work of art. Because this creates you know, the sense of, of, of competence and self-efficacy, but also of, of achievement that actually drives then, uh, uh, that, that improvement. So what, what, I, what I've learned in, in, in seven years or eight years of, of experimenting with this, uh, I've learned these few things. If possible, as little classroom as, uh, as, as we can. Uh, avoid batch and queue, especially in, in testing and exams. Uh, blend together different methods. 
think of learning as really PDCA, so learning and improvement should go together. And practice what you teach. Students like a lot. I mean, if I go to the classroom, you know, with the pens, with, you know, with my standardized work, with everything in order, it's, it's really for them something, something extremely, I mean, the fact that they see an example is extremely important. And challenge and support students uh, to reach this flow status. I mean, the flow status is when they have fun and they have fun in challenging themselves. So this is the first, uh, the first thing. Then the second question instead is more on the corp on corporate learning, corporate world, and uh, really, I mean, I'm using here the lean transformation models from LEI and LGN, and I've seen in some cases at least uh, that you know the right pillar of the transformation model, how do we develop people, is usually you know, one of the things that we uh, miss in in in, in transformation in lean transformations. Uh, and I want to show you this example. This is the example of a large European bank. Uh, they had a cost reduction strategy. In 2011, they introduced their own version of the Toyota Way in, or lean banking, whatever. Uh, it's big investment in consulting, uh, a, a, a fully codified, you know, wide set of, of, of practices and a big investment in infrastructures, lean specialists with a high staffing ratio applied both back office operations and software development activities, very successful in software development activities, not so much in back office operations. They rolled it out, very sophisticated, many tools and codified, top-down deployed, specialist driven. And the, the, idea, the underlying idea on people development was that they, the consultants would train the lean specialists and the lean specialists uh, uh, would train the first level supervisors that would eventually uh, uh, do the work with, with their team members. And the first level supervisors were actually the, the target of the transformation. At a certain point, they, they, uh, we received a, a telephone call and they asked us, uh, 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 can you please come and, and help us a little bit understand what's going on here? So what I simply did, I extracted a sample of the uh, productivity numbers of these different teams or offices and plot them uh, before uh, the treatment or the, the way of the rollout during and after and simply took a look at the data. And uh, since I, I'm supposed to be you know, rigorous in what I do, I also run some type of statistical test. But basically, the point is, as you can see from the data, that there's no real effect in terms of results. And, and so we asked why. OK, we asked why. And we used the lean transformation model. And you know, see the performance improvement, so purpose, process improvement, leadership, and we focused, I have no time to go through here, but on you know, capability development. And as you'll see in a second, you know, there was interesting things uh, going on there that actually blocked the transformation process. And it was on capability development, on people development, uh, that this actually took place. More specifically, one, uh, uh, misalignment about what was being learned. Uh, the lean specialists and the line managers, you know, were, were not in, online aligned about, you know, what was the understanding of what they were learning. The second thing is that uh, the supervisors, the trainees, affected reactions were negative. So most of the people actually uh, didn't like uh, the system or did not felt uh, a, a positive affection uh, to, to it. And I think that the 50% split is is somehow. Uh, insufficient to that. And more interestingly, uh, working as an organizational anthropologist here, I interviewed you know, the, these people. And actually, we also coded and analyzed the interviews with these people. And interestingly, when asked uh, these people, tell us a few episodes of your recent professional experience when you think you solved problems or you had results, I mean, in most of the cases in the episodes, nobody mentioned. The, the lean banking program. Nobody even mentioned that. Um, and you see here, this is you know, the data we have. It's the fraction of the interview content that was actually somehow related to, to the, to the uh, to program. So here we see that there was a, a training transfer breakdown or a learning transfer breakdown. Uh, and that's why, I mean, the degree of, of uh, in which training is applying the jobs, the skills gained in training situations was really, was really low. Um, another interesting little study that we run, well, just to show you, I mean, how important it is to, to have uh, 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 capability development in place here. This is another study on the, on 30 plus production department of a large time manufacturer, nine plants around the world. 
uh, we wanted to understand if there was an impact uh, of production managers' capability development behaviors on occupational safety. So if managers that actually spent the time on training the workers, line production managers, this had actually an effect uh, uh, on top of the address of the lean operations practices and occupational safety. And it was interesting to see that, in fact, as a matter of fact, it was an interesting and a very relevant effect, so that a one-point uh, score uh, difference uh, in this item of, of and in the, in the intensity of, uh, of capability development actually implied a, a minus uh, 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 2.16 um, uh, reduction in the probability of injuries and accident in the... So you might have the lean operations practices there, you might even have you know, the high involvement work practices there, but it's really you know, how you know, the managers, the, the production managers continuously uh, teach people systematically how to, how to, how to apply the tools that makes, uh, that makes a difference. Uh, lessons learned uh, in lean transformations, at least what I, I think I've learned, make sure capability development works by clarifying what needs to be learned and probably the best thing to do would be to have a reasonably small set of tools and also not too codified, despite what we think. Design the, the training transfer chains, the knowledge diffusion appropriately, making sure that there's no breakdown. And the role of supervisor and team leader is especially critical to link uh, learning with PDCA. Uh, another, if you want, very simple thing is make room for learning. Most of these people were so uh, occupied doing other things that there was no room for doing anything on top of that and create positive effective reaction uh, through information sharing, participation, and empowerment. That's it. Thank you very much, Arnaldo, for this great presentation. One question came to my mind immediately. How long is the perfect lean morning? What's the target's condition? How many minutes? <laughs> I, 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 we, we need to go back and refer to the document. I think it's between 13 and 14 minutes. Is a differentiation between male and female? Uh, I, think <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Let, don't me, know. Go, let me be gender correct. I don't know. <laughs> okay, very, very wise answer. <laughs> Okay, so any questions from your side? Uh, well, no, I guess. Oh, well, one. Okay, just wait for the mic. Yeah, hello. Roger Danauer from Frankfurt. Um, thanks for this nice presentation. Um, I guess one aspect in the lean of in the failure of the lean project was you said that the lean uh, that the management has to develop the people yeah but my suggestion is that um, the ceo the the board the upper management didn't not start to develop themselves yeah so the so the the management has to start with the transformation process themselves in order to then from this uh, state of mind yeah um, hire the consultants <laughs> who, instead of rolling out just the thing that they, they say to do, um, make a totally different project. So this is maybe one, one suggestion, idea. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so this was not a real question again, <laughs> just a comment. But anyway, we like your comments as well. Um, do we have a comment or a question? Yeah. Okay, Mike, wait a second, please, for the mic. Thank you very much. Mick. So uh, we do have a record. Uh, we had a colleague in Germany who was experimenting with the morning routine. Um, maybe not consistently, but he was at seven minutes. <laughs> okay. And for he's, ma male. He male. said, yes, you know him. <laughs> and uh, he said, in addition, please don't ask me when I am brushing my teeth. That's all I will say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, Thank you very much, Arnaldo. Thank you.